What is the way out for anti graft agency boards to stay above board? And Bini Chiefs reject Oshomole. This is Plus Politics. I am Coyote Ladende. Welcome back. This is Plus Politics. It has been a trajectory of face offs between Minister of Justice and EFCC boss, from Nu Rebadu and Andoka to Farida Waziri and uh, Mohamed Adoke to Ibrahim Lamode and Adoke, also the Minister of Justice then, and to the recent one, Abubakar Malami and Ibrahim Mago. How can anti graft agencies stay above board? Do they have to stoop to the AGF to succeed? Joining us to discuss this is Reverend Dapo Daramola, a public affairs analyst and also a political analyst. Good evening, Reverend Dapo. Always my pleasure. And we also have joining us in this conversation, Evans Ofeli, a legal practitioner. Evans, good evening. Good evening, Mr. Coyote. Yeah, let's get the conversation. Good evening, viewers. Good, good to have you. Let's get the conversation starting. This is more of analysis and things that are uh, showing up. Uh, uh, without reminding you, I'm sure you've been following the trajectory from 1999. Probably I should put it on record that Nu Ribadu was didn't just finish his tenure. It was demoted and later booted out. We have the case of Farida Waziri, who was also sacked from office in 2011. We have the case of uh, Ibrahim Lamode, who was also removed just when they have issues with the AGF. And now we have Ibrahim Magu still suspended as we speak. Let me speak to, uh, okay, by way of first mention, let me start with uh, Mr. Dagwa Daramola. What do you have to say about this? Is this really about, uh, um, you know, not respecting your boss, or it is a case of they deserve to be probed to? Well, I think I will begin by saying that the office is a very um, tempting office uh, based on the nature of corruption that we have in the country. Maybe if we, if we did not have the volume of corruption, especially in very high places, possibly um, that office, as much as it will be important, it will, be, it will not be a threat you know, to the office of the Attorney General of the Federation. But as we have it today, it's constantly going to happen because, I mean, first on the list of um, the many sins of um, Magu, of course, is nothing but in subordination to the office of the Attorney General. Out of the 10 things he was accused of, that's the very first thing on that list, in subordination. And that will always happen because, you see, the office of the EFCC chairman has become quite a very, in fact, I think it's, a, it's, a demi, it's, it's only a demigod that can occupy that office. That is the way everybody is seen. Whoever comes to, you know, becomes the chairman. Because whether you like it or not, is dealing with the, you know, people in high places. Those are the people he's going after. They are the ones who are looking for ways to beg him, to appeal to him, to look for, you know, entreaties for him not to come after them. So these are important people, governors, ministers, senators, people in the corporate industry, you know, bank and these, you know, these are the people he's dealing with. So there's no how the Attorney General of the Federation, if the person is not sometimes a serious-minded person, the people will be ego-tripping instead of looking at the substance of the matter. However, you don't blame the AGF also because the Constitution, I know we have a learned um, man in the House who will espouse more on this, but I'm very much aware that if you look at Section 174, Section 174, subsection 1, empowers the AGF to step into any territory as far as it comes to criminal proceedings in any part of the country. And I will read 174 in the subsection 1. It says, the powers of the AGF will include to institute and undertake criminal proceedings against any person before any court of law in Nigeria other than a court martial in respect of any offense, any offense, whether it is uh, economic in nature or whatever, it's criminal in nature, as any offense created by or under any act mm. of the National Assembly. And of course, the EFCC is set up, you know, under an act of the National Assembly. 
So there is nothing the man is doing, whether, whether the man or the woman who occupies the office of the chairman of EFCC, that he will not have to constantly, you know, have a recourse, you know, a reversion to the office of the ADF. So if anything had been done outside the, the norms or the provisions of the constitution, then it forms an insubordination. Number okay. two, subsection, you know, that same section was of the four. Okay. Part B says Dr. to Mola, take over let's... and continue any sort of criminal proceedings that may have been instituted by any other authority in person. Okay, so the office of the AGF is not something that whoever occupies the office of the EFCC chairman can neglect. Now, I'm speaking in two phases. One are the other many things that is under the 10 issues that, are, that were raised against Mabu. I have only taken the issue of, of insubordination and what can create or constitute insubordination. So that is why we have the whoever occupies that office of EFC okay. chairman does not have a choice in this situation. Okay. We can now look at the other scenes. We will look at the other scenes. We will look at the other scenes. For the purpose of this conversation, let's look at that one scene. And it seems that the scene has a lot of soft scenes. <laughs> but let's go to the lawyer himself. Uh, uh, what do you make sense of this? This look like uh, a structural problem in terms of reporting line. Because oftentimes, these uh, anti-graft agency bosses, they seem to go straight to the president. And... Uh, some kind of overlooking the office of the AGF? Well, the, the constitution in section 174 did not place the AGF above um, the chairman of uh, the anti graph agency called the uh, Economic and Financial Crimes Commission. It only empowers the uh, AGF to uh, institute, take over, discontinue, and continue criminal cases in any court in whether it refers to any act of the National Assembly or any commission, agency, or institution that is um, created by an act of the National Assembly. So let's rest that on that. And then back to the issue of uh, Magu and his disposition. Magu is actually answerable to the presidency in terms of the administration and the management of the office. But where the Attorney General is interested in any case, for which it intends to take over, discontinue, or whatever the constitution empowers the AGF to do so. But when you look at it graphically, the issue we're having here stems out of the issue of assets for future and disposal, okay? Section 27, section 31 of the EFCC Act empowers the EFCC, okay, to dispose assets that you know, are, uh, you know, forfeited uh, through a court proceedings, okay, that, that um, um, uh, a suspect or a convict who, you know, is prosecuted by the EFCC and have been found guilty or um, the asset have been declared to so be proceeds of crime. Then the EFCC is empowered by the EFCC Act 2004 to dispose of this asset. Now, the AGF is interfering with that, uh, that uh, provision. The provision of the act. Because if you look at it over the years, there has always been a collaboration between the AGF and uh, uh, immigration. So when immigration sees properties and they want to dispose, they involve the AGF. When the army, the navy sees ships, and then there is... Um, uh, and uh, a level of uh, disposal that is required, they involve the AGF. But you know that the army, the uh, immigration, and all that are not specifically empowered in their acts, okay, to dispose of properties. Hence, they involve, they involve the AGF, okay? But the EFCC Act is a different thing entirely. It's a departure from that norm, okay, such that... The act in section 27, section 31, empowers the EFCC. In fact, they have a, direct, a directorate of uh, forfeiture and disposal of properties that are acquired from the proceeds of crime. Okay, so um, the, 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 the fracas in, in, between these two persons, Malami and Magu, stem from a plectoria of um, properties that uh, were seized by the EFCC, part of which 
was the property seized from the, uh, the, the asset of design in Alice in Madrequay and so many prominent Nigerians. And these properties, they amount to so a humongous amount of money. They are, one of the allegations that was raised by Melami is that um, uh, Magu wanted to dispose this property or had disposed some of these properties to his friends and cronies, okay? Investigation is still ongoing. The matter is still being investigated. There's a panel on this and all that. Magu is preparing to put out a defense before the public on this issue. So one thing we must understand is that um, the ESCC Act is clear on jurisdiction and boundaries. At no point did ESCC Act mention the AGF to interfere with the affairs of the EFCC. But the Constitution empowers the AGF to so interfere based okay. on taking over cases and discontinuing or, or continuing Continue. these cases. That is the limit of the jurisdiction. The limit of the jurisdiction by section 174 of the 1999 Constitution as amended on the AGF is not for the AGF to take over assets and properties and dispose. The law did not say so. And if you look at the problem between the two parties, it's on those assets and the disposition of the assets. So we will look at it clearly to look at the powers of the AGF as empowered by section 174 of the Constitution stem true in activities. Okay. Stem true activities, activities of um, taking over matters, discontinuing same, and okay. then uh, Evans. Uh, uh, taking all issues against activities Evans, in matters. You, you know and the all temptation that. about this but program. The is, ESCC Act and the chairman of the ESCC, the powers are far more than that. He can prosecute, okay. he can trace, he can dispose assets. You can, you know, prosecute for forfeiture and then do so many other things okay. for Evans, the federal I, government. I, I know the temptation context. is um, you, you, you are still in your regalia, so you might want to give us all the details, but good foundation for us. But let's look at the politics of it, uh, having done justice to the legal background about their powers, their limitations, the politics of it. Is it that uh, this EFCC bosses don't know how to play the game because oftentimes their removal is usually hinged on this AGF from successive government. So let me start with Dr. Paul. How, do we, how should they be advised for adventure, the current EFCC acting chairman? Again, I think, um, like I said, the foundation are laid at the beginning of the program. I'm just going to differ uh, briefly from the lawyer, uh, not in, in substance really, but just the context of the matter. Um, I think he focused only on one area, which had to do with asset for features and disposition of assets and all that. But if you look at the 10 grounds um, upon which Magu was suspended, you know, um, which the ADF put forward, that wasn't the only reason. There are 10 issues, and some of them are fundamental in terms of you know, prosecutions and how my how cases have been handled. Uh, I remember not too long ago, uh, there was a matter that had to be discontinued, you know, for some technical reasons and all of that. And um, so if you look at the 10 issues, including even the fact that, you know, there was a late action on the investigation of the P and ID uh, leading to, of course, legal disputes. Okay. And even not providing enough concrete evidences against some suspects, including on uh, the matter of Desi uh, Alice and So the issues are more of, you know, let us say I differ briefly, not, not totally, but in terms of context, not in terms of the substance of the matter. So it, it's within the range of, you know, the, the conflict between the office of the AGF in terms of the powers that, you know, the office of the AGF has in section 174 as um, put forward. So that, that is not just to, you know, kind of uh, reposition the discourse. However, in terms of the politics, it's going like I said, it's always going to happen. If you look at what the trend of what we are seeing now, especially under the presidency of Muhammad Bouhari, you've seen a lot of issues between um, um, uh, helmsmen of different departments and agencies of government versus the supervising minister, you know, of, of the ministry under which those, those departments are meant, you know, to function. Of course, we've seen what happened with NDDC, we've seen what has happened, you know, the list is endless, NDE versus Ministry of Labor, NS, you know, ITF versus Ministry of Labor. We've seen all this going on because 
the act of national assembly, any department or agency of government or any you know, authority set up by the act of national assembly. Sometimes the way, we, maybe the phraseologies or in terms of you know, the documentation and also the existing you know, position of, of the constitution, this too needs to be looked at. And then we can you know, appreciate the situation better. If you want to create any organization or any organ of government to be fully independent, okay, then do that so that there will be no point of conflict. Because the major point of conflict, where I agree with you know the lawyer, is that of course directly in terms of reporting, in terms of line of reporting, the ERCC chairman does not have any business with the office of the either the Attorney General of the Federation or the Minister of Justice, whoever is occupying that position. But when the conflict comes in, which is, I think, we should continue to look at, we are a growing you know, democracy. And these are issues, concrete issues, that even the National Assembly should be looking at. We should, be, we, we, we should have, I mean, get to that point where we can situate these organizations properly so that if, I mean, the ERCC chairman, like many others, they report directly to the office of the, like he said, the presidency, and most times to the president. Because, like Buhari has said, Corruption, anti-corruption fight is the biggest, you know, mandate he has given himself. If that is the case, one of the biggest, you know, uh, organization or organ that he needs most is the EFCC or the ICPC. And of course, the office of the LGF is integral to this. However, the politics that comes in is that there are some issues that are going to cause that if the office of the EFCC chairman does not properly carry along the, the attorney general of the federation, there will be conflict at at the end of the day, okay. and that's where the language, like in subordination, will come in. Okay. But you know, so but if this is not streamlined properly, we will keep having okay. this problem. Like Thank I said, you. the office of the EFCC chairman, based on the volume of corruption in the country, has become something set apart for a demigod. After the president, I think the person people fear most or respect most in this country is the office of the EFCC chairman. So it's because we have a loads and loads of corruption in this country. So until we're able to position the offices in a way that there is no conflict, there will still be a problem. Even okay. whoever occupies that office, there okay. will still be a problem. I'm coming to that. Uh, Evans, uh, why you might want to quick also react on the legal uh, interpretation, but let's also stay on the issue of politics. How do we have this kind of seamless relationship where co corruption can be fought headlong. I'm not absorbing the current EFCC, I mean the former EFCC chairman, but I'm saying, how do we have a united force in fighting corruption? Well, you cannot fight corruption without collaborations. Um, no one person, <laughs> not even the president, can single-handedly fight corruption because Corruption is a monster. Corruption is more Corruption is um, hydra-headed, okay? So it comes with so much force, so much tenacity to destroy the system and to upturn processes and procedures. So why there is always conflict between the AGF and the ESCC chairman stems from the fact that the laws empower them to act differently on the same issue like the constitution empowers the AGF to take over criminal cases and discontinue and all that. And then the EFCC also empowers, uh, the FCC Act empowers the, the EFCC to prosecute. So, you know, um, and then it goes into asset and all that. So the politics of it is that uh, there should be a way of coercion between the two uh, offices. There must be a strategy for coercion. Uh, possibly the ESCC Act should be amended such that it will uh, incorporate some level of um, coercion between the office of the AGF and that of the ESCC. Since the Constitution already empowered the AGF to take over all criminal cases, it will only be, be, be nice and proper for the EFCC Act okay, to create some room for collaboration and synergy for, for um, a tight working together because the two laws that establishes the two offices, okay, have no meeting point as regards the powers of the leaders of these two offices, hmm. okay? They, they, are, they are kept apart 
in terms of creation, but in terms of activities and function, there are overlapping functional activities. If, if I have power to prosecute as the ESCC, and I can do all that, investigate and prosecute, and at the same time, the matters for which I have powers to investigate and prosecute, another agency, another ministry of government also have power to take over and discontinue. The only right paradigm or the only right way to go about it is for these two persons to be in unison, to have understanding of the laws that created both offices, and to also have understanding that these laws also make provision for uh, one to act in the place of the other in function and in activities and processes. So we can only say that to cure the issue of the politics, both parties must collaborate and understand that corruption is one um, act or activity that cannot be fought by just an agency. If we have that understanding, the presidency or the president himself should also step in between that function to make the two parties understand that this is a war that we have to come together to fight. Therefore, we must not only know and understand our boundaries, we must know how to collaborate. That is why you find joint operation of the army, the police, the LASMA, and all that. There's always a joint, a collaborative synergy, okay, to achieve a goal. That is what they call teamwork in management, okay? okay? That is required. Okay. And why I was talking about the issue of the, the assets and the disposal and all that earlier on, because um, the first speaker had actually laid a good foundation. I came up with that position because I know that the issues are 10. In fact, the allegations are even 24, not just 10. Okay? It's widespread. Okay, but whatever the cases are, parties must understand, like I said, on how to go about it because... The issue of insubordination arose because one party is empowered by the Constitution, another is empowered by an act of National Assembly. So the natural propensity is that the person who is empowered by the Constitution might want to feel and think that the person empowered by the act is, you know, a, subord a subordinate a subject, should be subordinate to the, 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 the office that was created directly the by the norm. Constitution. Yeah. But if you look at it, the same Constitution empowered the, the National Assembly, okay, to you know, uh, uh, come up with acts of the National Assembly for which the ESCC, uh, Office of the, the, the ESCC okay. was created. You understand? Very so well. I think that parties should um, come together, okay, define the boundaries, state the, the area okay. of concentration and the force that is required, and then get to work. Evans. Because corruption is Evans. the reason Nigeria is not growing. Corruption is the reason Evans. we are. We are so backward in, it, in it the community of tempting. nations. It is quite tempting. So it is un unnecessary and uncalled for for you to have, you know, uh, public servants who are leaders of agencies okay. and commissions of government Evans. fighting over issues of insubordination. And Evans, if you can hear it. me, if you can hear me, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling so sad that uh, our time is already spent on this issue. But because I didn't preempt that this is going to be your last comment, maybe I should just give you 15, 15 seconds just to say that um, do we have a problem of round peg in a, in, in, in a square hole in terms of people that are manning this anti graft agency? Let me start with you, Dr. Paul. Please, 15 seconds. I beg you. Well, like I said, it's a straightforward matter. And I think, uh, you know, uh, there's been a synergy in, in opinion here. Uh, clearly, some of the things I've said is what um, the barista espoused, you know. Clearly, the laws are the issues. Uh, beyond, the, beyond the functionaries in, the, in those, I mean, in those offices, the laws are the problem. The, the way the laws are end is, is what is posing the problem. Okay. You know, and that is why the AGF is seen you know, the ERTC boss as okay. a subordinate. It's not, he's not a subordinate. Good. But it's because he can intervene anytime and take his cases out of court. So we need to sit down okay. and see how we can streamline these positions for, for, you know, effective combat, you know, an attack on corruption in this country. Beautiful. Without that, they will, like I said, it will continue to happen. Thank you so much. And quickly, uh, Feli, do you yeah, also I, share... I, I think, okay. I think, Go ahead. Hello. I, I, think, I think that the solution to the problem, just like section 174, subsection 2, 
says that you can take over this continent and do all other except cases that are, are, are in the court martial. Okay? Maybe we should amend the constitution to say that the attorney general should not have powers to take over cases that have been handled by the EFCC. Mm -hmm. If we have that, then the attorney general of the federation will be completely cut off in, in terms of jurisdiction and spread of powers from the activities of the ESCC. Okay. But as currently constituted, the laws as currently constituted, there's always going to be an overlap. And it will take a lot of maturity from the two parties in the two uh, uh, agencies of government to be able to resolve same. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, Evans Ovelli, a legal practitioner, for your insight. And thank you, Dr. Paul Daramola, for your intervention. We quite appreciate your positions on this issue. And to our viewers, thank you for staying with us. We'll take a short break now. And when we return, Oshamale regrets supporting Obaseki in 2016. What does this mean? We'll be right back after the short break.